good afternoon ladies and gentlemen in this video uh, i'm going to discuss a modeling volatility let me start with the concept of uh, volatility what do we mean by volatility volatility is a statistical measure of the dispersion of returns for a given security or market index it represents how large an asset's price is swing around the mean price so in a way as i mentioned earlier it is a statistical measure of its dispersion of returns there are a number of ways with which we can measure volatility and uh, these ways include beta coefficients option pricing models and uh, standard deviations of returns volatile assets are considered as uh, more riskier than less volatile assets because the price is expected to be less predictable uh, volatility is a very important variable for calculating options prices uh, regarding modeling volatility uh, we have two types of uh, models that is arch or uh, auto regressive conditional heterosc elasticity and garch models that is generalized auto regressive conditional heterosc elasticity first we will discuss auto regressive conditionally auto regressive conditionally heterosc elastic models the full model may be written as yt is equal to beta 1 plus beta 2 x 2t plus up to beta k x k t plus u t where u t is normally distributed with zero mean and uh, uh, variance sigma square where sigma square at time t is equal to alpha naught plus alpha 1 u t minus 1 square and uh, we can easily extend this model to the general case where the error variance uh, depends on q legs of squared errors and that could be written as sigma square t is equal to alpha 1 plus alpha naught plus alpha 1 u t minus 1 square plus alpha 2 u t minus 2 square plus up to alpha q u t minus q square so this is uh, an arch q model in which there are q legs sometime we see in the literature that instead of variance sigma square t uh, we find in the literature that ht is used so that the model could be written uh, and instead of sigma square t we write ht and ht is equal to alpha 1 plus alpha naught plus alpha 1 ut minus 1 square plus alpha 2 ut minus 2 square plus alpha q ut minus q square and there is another way of writing arch model is in this uh, equation uh, the two are uh, different ways are of expressing exactly the same model however the first form of the model is easier to understand while the second form is uh, required for simulating from an arch model uh, then we can test for arch effects first we will run any postulated linear regression of the following form where yt is equal to beta 1 plus beta 2 x 2t plus up to beta k x k t plus ut and then we will save the residuals ut hat then we will square the residual and uh, regress them on q on legs to test for arch of order q that is we will run the regression ut hat square and that is equal to gamma naught plus gamma 1 ut minus 1 hat square up to gamma q ut minus q hat square plus vt where vt is independent and identically distributed and then we will obtain the r square that is coefficient of uh, determination from this uh, regression and then the test statistic is defined as uh, t r square where the number of observations will be multiplied by the coefficient of determination from the last regression and that will be distributed as quai square with q degrees of freedom uh, testing for uh, arch effects the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis are as follows in the null hypothesis all gammas are equal to zero while in alternative hypothesis they are assumed not to be equal to zero so if the value of the test statistic is uh, higher than the critical value from the chi square distribution then we will reject the null hypothesis otherwise otherwise we fail to reject the null hypothesis 
there are certain problems with the arch q models because the question is how can we decide on q what would be the number of uh, legs the required value of q might be very large sometime and then there will be non negativity constraints that might be violated and uh, thirdly a natural extension of an arch q model which gets around some of this problem is a gauge model now we discuss generalized arch that is generally auto regressive conditionally heterostatic model these model were developed by bolerslev in 1986 which allows the unconditional variance to be dependent upon previous own legs and the variance equation is sigma square t is equal to alpha not plus alpha 1 ut minus 1 square plus beta 2 sigma square t minus 1 this is gart 11 model which is like arma 11 model for the variance equation and we, we could also write uh, these equations for uh, equa um, the variance as follows by iterative substitution of uh, sigma square t minus i for i is equal to 2 3 up to t uh, then we have gauge 1 1 model that could be written as an infinite order of arch model but in general the gauge 1 1 model will be sufficient to capture the volatility clustering in the data and the question is why is gauge better than the arch and some research, some researchers report that gauge models are more parsimonious than the arch models they avoid overfitting and they are less likely to breach non negativity constraints the unconditional variance under the gauge specification given by this equation uh, alpha 1 plus beta is less than 0 but when alpha 1 plus beta is greater than or equal to 1 then this is termed as a non stationarity invariance if alpha plus beta is equal to 1 then this is termed as a integrated gauge for non stationarity invariance the conditional variance forecast will not converge on their unconditional value as the horizon increases how can we estimate arch or gauge models since these models are no longer of the usual linear form so we cannot use oils and even if we use oils their uh, parameters estimates will be uh, biased so we may use some other techniques including maximum likelihood this method works by finding the most likely values of the parameters given the actual data and uh, specifically we form a log likelihood function and uh, maximize it uh, there is some extension to the basic gauge model since the gauge model was developed a huge number of extensions and variants have been proposed three of the most important examples include e gauge that is exponential gauge gjr and uh, gauge m models uh, because there are certain problems with the gauge pq models Uh, and these include non negativity constraint may still be violated gart models cannot account for leverage effects so the possible solution would be to use exponential gart the gjr model which are asymmetric gart models the e gart model was developed by nelson 1991 and the various the variance equation is given by log sigma square t and that is equal to omega plus uh, beta log sigma t minus 1 square and so on there are certain advantages of this model since we model the log of uh, sigma square t then even if the parameters are uh, negative uh, sigma square t will be always positive and we can count for the leverage effect if the relationship between volatility and uh, returns is uh, negative uh, gamma will be negative uh, the other types of uh, the model can also be uh, used that include gjr and the gart m models so i just uh, uh, discussed this briefly uh, thank you very much for uh, your attention
ladies and gentlemen if you haven't yet subscribed to this youtube channel kindly do subscribe to the channel and uh, do not forget to the to click on the bell icon uh, for timely information of uh, the other videos that will be uploaded for you uh, thank you very much for watching this video and uh, the channel i would like you to share this channel and uh, various videos with your colleagues with your friends